Okay, for about the uh, umpteenth time, I'm going to fix my headrest. Um, the, uh, the headrests on the Jaguar XK8s, they have a tendency to, to quit working. There's a cable in here that runs from the motor, which is right here, up to the headrest uh, assembly. And that cable, the, the outer jacket of the cable is a little bit too long. And we've got to cut off a piece of the cable. Um, to do that, you've got to take off the uh, leather skin, just raise it up. And um, I'm going to get to that here in just a second. But what you're going to need, you need a, a T25 Torx screwdriver because the, the screws on the motor are T25s. You need a little thin screwdriver like that to get the, the leather released. You're going to need some heat shrink. I'm using two different kinds. Um, one kind is this right here. It's just a, a, a little thin piece. It's, it's supposed to have some uh, adhesive on the inside, but it's not very thick. Um, this is just to seal up the joint. And then I'm using this stuff right here, which is really hefty. I mean, this is thick stuff. I got this on eBay. Um, and you can see it's uh, just a, bit, a little smaller than my thumb. Um, my finger goes in there. Actually, it's about the diameter of my finger. I forget what size it is. It's not marked. But it's probably like a three-quarter inch, I'm guessing. Um, and this stuff has adhesive on the inside. and it's really thick, strong adhesive um, that's going to hold everything together. I've done this several other times, and the other times I've done it, I didn't use heat wrap or heat shrink that was uh, tough enough, and it kind of ended up not working after a while. Um, and also, I don't think I was cutting off enough of the, uh, the outer jacket of the cable. Um, the, the instructions say to cut off 12 millimeters, but I think it's actually more like 14 millimeters, because even at 12 millimeters, I was still having problems where it would work intermittently. So I've, uh, I've cut off 14 millimeters on the other seat, which I did just a minute ago, and it's working great. So um, here we go. The first thing to do is to, uh, on the back here, um, well, actually, on mine, it's already come out. This little piece right here, um, it's kind of hard to see. Let me get out of the way. This little piece right here is normally it's folded over like this and it's tucked up into this piece on the front of the seat. Um, this piece is a J channel and this piece is just flat and as you can see this folds over and normally it's tucked up in there. Um, I guess last time I did it I didn't get it back in good. But let me just slide it back in to show you how it works. So I'm going to tuck that up under there. Anyway, this is actually the hard part getting this there we go I got it back in this is the hardest part it's the hardest part to figure out um, to do it what you do you just take a thin little screwdriver and on the back of this here when you come down to the bottom about where the seams end you can see where there's a, a joint where this folds over and it's invisible you can't see it from the from the outside um, and it was really hard for me to figure out because the instructions just say to, to remove it and I'm like how the hell do you remove it um, but what you can do is you take just a thin screwdriver and slide it up in there into that J channel. When you, when you go up in there, you'll feel it. And then you just kind of wedge it in and you can pop out. The other little piece. And it came out real easy because I didn't have it slid in totally. But um, it'll basically come out like a zipper. You, you start on one end and it'll just slide out through the whole side all the way to the other side. And then you've got two other small pieces um, on the outer part of this. And these can either just slide right out. You can slide them out like that, or you can take them out the same way by using a little screwdriver. I just slide them out. And that one's out. And then that one's out. So now, now that those are out, um, what you can do is untuck this fabric right here. and on the other side. And then you can take the skin of the seat. We have some junk in here. You can take the skin of the seat and just kind of start pulling it up over the uh, foam cushioning.
and you just want to turn it inside out as you're doing it because turning it inside out just kind of lets it it's like taking off a, a t-shirt or something now there's also I just noticed I've got to get these things disconnected there's also these little white pieces they come down and they wrap around this um, piece of something on there and they're held in with some little metal rings you just uh, loosen up those rings just twist them off and these little pieces will come right off and also I just realized before I start sliding this this leather skin up I've got to take this piece of this piece of wood out there's a board in there so you take that out and set it to the side and then everything should just roll up pretty easily and on the front of the seat there's some velcro that holds the fabric on the front or the uh, leather on the front of the seat to the foam and that velcro makes a ripping sound as you're pulling it away um, if you start hearing a ripping sound, it's probably the Velcro, but stick your finger up in there and just to make sure. Um, also, on the back here, I don't know if you can see this. Copper framework. Um, there are these little clips that you're going to be able to see in just a minute, but I need to remove them first. To remove them, you just slide your finger up in there, and they pop right off. You slide them up from the outside. They pop off. You'll be able to feel them with your fingers. You can't see them to remove them, but you can feel them on that metal framework. And really, you just need to pop off the, pot, the bottom too, because that's. A far as we need to go. We don't need to slide the skin all the way off. We just need to slide it up about that much. Now we've got the, uh, actually we're going to do the, the, the bottom three. We need a little bit more room. Now that we've got it slid up, you can see here my old joint is right here. It's hidden behind this uh, there's a piece of plastic, white plastic. I'm on the, the passenger side. On the driver's side, the motor and everything is still on the same side, but this, um, this white fabric that holds the uh, the fabric around the front, it's on the opposite side. So the, everything is going to be the same on the driver's side as on the passenger side, except for this little white fabric that doesn't really do anything. We're not even worried about it. Um, so right now, let, let me do this. Let me pop this thing off and disconnect the harness there. With those disconnected, I have easier access to the motor. That's where I need my T25 Torx bit. And what I'm going to do, there's a little bracket here on top of the motor. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, you should be able to see now. There's a little bracket here on top of the motor. This this whole thing right here is the motor. And this bracket holds this cable in place. And what I want to do, the outer screw, there's two screws on the bracket. The outer screw, I'm going to completely remove it. Just set it to the side. And the, the inner screw, the one towards the front of the seat, I'm just going to loosen it about a turn. And then with that loose, what I can do is this little bracket, this little clip, I can just push it to the side, and then that allows me to lift the, the cable out. that has this little silver end on it. I'm going to slide it up. All right, so now 
I've got that out of the motor. In fact, what I'm going to do is take it completely out. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it out from behind this. Actually, when I put it back in, I'm going to put it on front of it because that would be easier. It doesn't need to be behind that, that piece of fabric right there. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the original repair that I tried to do. And this actually held up for a pretty decent amount of time. Let me zoom out so you can see everything. When I did the original repair, I used um, Gorilla Tape, which um, kind of worked, but it quit working after a while. Um, I've learned after doing this several times that the, the thing to do is use this really hef heavy duty um, shrink wrap. Now, if you were doing this for the first time, this would all be one piece. This would be, this would be on there just like that. It'd be all one piece, um, except it'd be 12, mil 12 millimeters longer. Um, what the instructions say to do is take a razor blade. And then just cut a piece out of the middle. So you cut around to uh, cut it off, and then you can slide that piece off. And with that piece slid off, you can measure down 12 millimeters and cut off another section, like if I was doing this, I'd measure down 12 millimeters and cut off like right there. Um, but, um, like I was saying, the better way to do this is to take this end piece and somehow maybe just cut it off right there and then stick some needle nose pliers down there and get that, that piece out of the middle and then slide it back on. That way you don't have this joint in the middle that I've been having trouble with now for two years on my car um, but I'm fixing it for good this time I know I am I'm fixing it for good um, so anyway what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut off another two millimeters uh, approximately two millimeters and I think that should fix my problem probably gonna cut my thumb here while I'm doing this you want to make it as square as possible too so now I got two mil the two millimeters for a total of 14 millimeters cut off and I'm going to slide that back on there. And I'm going to take my first piece of shrink wrap, which is the thin stuff. Because it's just kind of sealing up the joint there to keep the glue from the bigger piece from getting in. And I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to take my heat gun to it. So I'm going to take the heat gun to it. Make sure it's centered. And the shrink wrap will shrink up. And then I can put the big piece over top of it. Ow, oh, that's hot. And while the shrink wrap is still hot, you can make sure it's pushed together good, make sure the joint's lined up, and then it'll start cooling down. You can touch it and it hardens as it cools. And just make sure that everything is lined up there. And then just hold it in place because you don't want the... Uh, the tubing to slide down in while you're doing it. Now I'm going to take my piece of super dupy heavy duty uh, adhesive lined shrink wrap and slide it up over there and pretty much center it. Let me get it even there. So I need to keep up that right there. So I'll put it about right there. And I'm going to hold this so that I can get the heat gun on. You got to keep moving the heat gun around. But I'll shrink this on there.
And now that it's shrunk, I'll make sure everything's together. And I'm just going to let it cool for a while because it's still very flexible and bendy right now. And before I stick this back behind there, I want to uh, let it cool down so that it stiffens up. It, this stuff, as it shrinks, the wall of it gets really thick. And then, um, but it's really flexible right now because it's hot. But once it cools down, it'll be pretty stiff. It'll still be flexible, but it'll, it'll be a lot stiffer. But so now this has cooled down some. I'm just going to push it through here around that piece of metal. And I'm push it up into the thing because I want to be able to slide it into the hole in the seat motor. And there it goes. It goes down in there. And then I can take the bracket here and push it back around and take the screw and put the screw back in and take my T25 Torx bit. And screw that down. And then on, well, on the inside, I can tighten it up. And then I just want to check right quick to see if it's uh, working. So I'm going to plug it back in. Key in and try the. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's moving. So it's working. 